This is a pre-built gaming PC from NZXT. This is one of their BLD custom systems and they teamed up with AMD on it. They wanted to send this over for me to take a look at and share with you all. This is supposed to be a very powerful PC. More powerful than anything I have here in the studio anyways. So what I'm gonna do is unbox it, show you all what NZXT BLD is about, and I'll give you some of my thoughts on it. All right, first things first, let's get this opened up. All right, so we do have some pretty nice foam in here. It's that nice stuff that can actually compress and actually provides cushion. So we have the second box in here. I'm gonna have to put this camera down to get this out. We do have something else wedged in here. One of their gaming desk mats. Nice. All right, let's get this out. And on the bottom here, we also have another layer of uh, foam. Very good packaging by NZXT. We do have the NZXT H510 flow case here and the full build is gonna be in here. So let's get this open. All right, inside we are greeted with a quick start guide. It walks through the monitors, peripherals, internet, if you have any audio devices, and then power, which also, it does have an image for the power supply switch to be flipped on, so that's good. And then there's just information here for if you need any customer support. So this is good to see. Oops. The power cord, extra modular cable, so they've included all of that. And then this bag with all the extra accessories. Uh, here's the hardware mounting for uh, Intel motherboards and CPUs because this one has an AMD processor in it. So there's that, there's more modular cables. There's the antennas for the Wi-Fi. So this has pretty much everything else. The, the PCIe brackets from the back, SATA cables, and all the instructions and warranty stuff. Yeah, so everything is included in here, which is nice. We're not really gonna need any of this though. This system should be pretty much good to go. And I'm gonna hard line in, so I don't need the, the antennas for the Wi-Fi. All right, here it is, the build. We do see that they use a couple of packs of Instapack, which is the expanding foam that you put in here and it conforms to the shape of whatever's inside. And that's mainly in this system because we have an AIO, the only big thing in here that's really sticking out is gonna be the graphics card. And that's to hold the graphics card in place so that during transportation, it doesn't get rocked around and like completely rip out of the motherboard socket. So let's open this up and get that out. All right, there's the first piece. Sometimes this stuff expands really good in there and it's super wedged in. Just be careful pulling it out in case anything uh, is pulled up on the backside, but um, oh wow. There's two AIOs in here. All right, so I was not aware that this PC was gonna have a graphics card that also had its own uh, AIO cooler on it. I thought only this AIO was gonna be for the CPU and I thought it was gonna be an air-cooled card. Just taking a quick look around uh, everything looks very clean, cable management on the front side anyways. They did a pretty good job paying attention to detail, uh, zip tying like any of the loose pigtails on the PCIe 8-pin uh, connectors. We've got zip ties here as well on the AIO tubes with the fan cable. And pretty much everything else looks very clean. All the cables coming in from the power supply basement. Uh, are tucked away so that they're barely showing except for what needs to be connected to the motherboard. And same here with the 24 pin connector as well as the USB type C front uh, header connector. And then for the AIO cables, yeah, they're all coming straight up and out the back. So for the most part, aside from, you know, we have all these tubes dangling around uh, due to having two AIOs, like we move this out of the way. Very good job on the cable management. Uh, so let's take a look at the backside now. Cable management on the backside is looking very clean. I would say that they they did a better job than I probably could have done. Like there's very minimal bundling of cables down here, uh, but 
In terms of using all the channels well and not having any like super huge like bundling up of uh, cables up here, like these all come down very clean, all zip tied off at the different tie off points. Uh, the ones coming up here for the CPU, those are all tied down very nicely. And yeah, they, they have a clean path going down here. This is gonna make it so that if the user after getting this PC ever decides to add anything or move anything or change anything up, uh, they have plenty of space to work with and everything is very organized so that they can reach all the cables they need to. So in terms of the first physical inspection, I would say that this looks really good, but now we need to plug it in uh, and turn it on to make sure there's no issues regarding temperatures or just any other uh, things causing it not to properly boot up. All right, let's see how first power up goes. It's too hard to see with the reflection on this. I'll put it back on when we do like a quick temperature test and all that and the benchmarks, but too hard to see through that. So booting up as expected. Oh my goodness, my monitor is a mess. Let me wipe that up real quick. All right, so the computer starts up with no issues. I'm just gonna have to get through these uh, typical Windows setups right now, so let me do that. All right, so let's take a look around Windows real quick. The first thing I wanna do is look at bloatware. So let's go to add and remove programs, and we'll take a look at what they've already pre-installed. From the desktop, I can already see that there is NZXT Cam here, and Cam is gonna be used to control the motherboard and the AIO cooler, so we'll get that opened up as well. But while that's initializing, if we take a look here. Yeah, looking through this list, I'm not seeing anything that's really added as anything extra. I think for most people, the antivirus is going to be the biggest thing that they would probably want to remove. Those are kind of annoying when they come installed on computers. But yeah, for right now, all I'm seeing that isn't like default Microsoft stuff um, is the NZXT cam. So... But we get in here and we can see some of the uh, stats for the system. We have temperatures, utilization, all that. So this is actually gonna be useful for the next part where I'm gonna do a quick uh, stress test for this. But um, let's take a look at the overall system spec. So we'll open up the Radeon software. Core specs wise, and I'll put the full list on the screen too. We do have AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X3D, as well as the liquid cooled RX 6900 XT. We do have 32 gigabytes here across two modules. And in terms of the SSD, we do have a one terabyte uh, it looks like a Western Digital Blue SN570. And then for the motherboard, I wonder if Cam is gonna say what this is. It does, we do have the N7B550. The memory is 4000 megahertz T-Force uh, Extreme ARGB. Speaking of which, I believe this memory is not set to this XMP right now. So let's go and restart the system and take a look in the BIOS. All right, we're in BIOS and we do see here that the memory modules are not running at the 4000 megahertz rated speeds. They're at 2400, so we'll go over to overclocking real quick and we will load the XMP. So this is something that I kind of wish that NZXT already did for the customer because for someone like me or maybe a lot of you out there who have done this before, it's not a big deal. But for someone who just wants to buy a fully working computer, they're not knowledgeable at all, they may be new to the PC space, they should be getting the most optimal configured PC out of the box where they don't have to go into these settings. Now, I give NGXE props for, you know, a couple of years ago changing their policy so that if you do enable XMP, they still give you the warranty. But it would just be nice if they went ahead and did this step for the customers that don't want to go through. Because, I mean, for a new person going through BIOS and looking through all these different menus, I would say it's a little bit daunting uh, and it can be intimidating. That's just my thoughts on it. Now let's take a look if smart access memory is enabled on here because we do have a 5000 series AMD CPU as well as a 6000 series uh, RX card. All right, here it was under PCI configuration in advance. So yeah, we do have resize bar support enabled. So that's good. So that's enabled. Uh, so that really the XMP is the only thing that I wish they would have enabled in the BIOS. But we're good to go here. Uh, and let's get back into Windows. 
So in terms of specs, this is very much a high-end gaming PC. We've got a really high-end graphics card from Team Red as well as their gaming-specific processor. So for those of you that don't know, the 3D in the 5800X 3D stands for the 3DB cache that it has, which is an additional 64 megabytes of L3 cache on top of the existing 32 megabytes of L3 cache that the original 5800X has. For gaming, that gives a pretty good performance uplift. And outside of gaming, you know, it's still a pretty solid 8-core, 16-thread, CPU, uh, but AMD is very open about the fact that for content creation, the 5800X 3D doesn't really give you a performance increase. If that's a bigger focus for you, then you probably want to stick with the 5800X or the 5900X, uh, which are going to give actually better performance because this is a locked processor and they, it has lower base and boost clocks as well as it cannot be overclocked. So keep that in mind. Again, 5800X 3D very much catered towards the gamer who wants that maximum FPS. Because you can't overclock it, it does lend itself well to the people out there who typically don't like to overclock at all. So you don't really have to worry about any of that. AMD designed the CPU to already maximize the voltage and clock speed performances at stock. If you were one of the early adopters of Ryzen, uh, or if you initially built yourself like a budget system to save money, say you're on like a 300 or even a 400 series motherboard, you can still use this chip with it if the motherboard does have bio support for it and a lot of companies did update their bio so that it can take in a 5800x 3d that's been one of the major advantages of the am4 platform is that even people who got motherboards like three four five years ago some of their motherboards can still support stuff that are still coming out let me know down in the comments actually how many of you out there are on like a b350 or an x370 or like a b450 or an x470 board as of right now i'm very curious how many people out there were like first gen ryzen adopters and they kept the first motherboard they had and just swapped out the CPUs uh, over the last few years. All right, so to quickly make sure there's nothing wrong with the system, I'm gonna throw a high CPU and a high GPU workload at it in the form of Cinebench and Furmark. And I'm gonna check NZXD cam, make sure temperatures and fans and stuff are, are acting as expected. If there was something wrong during the installation, like if the AIO was installed badly and there wasn't correct mounting pressure and things like that, we will be seeing higher temperatures. But if everything is as expected, then uh, temperature should be within reason and uh, the system should run without crashing or anything like that. So in Cinebench, we are going to run a 30 minute stability just to keep it running for a while and we'll do multi-core. And then for Mark, we will do a GPU stress test. Uh, this is a quick check just to make sure like there's nothing seriously wrong before we start loading on the games because we'll be doing the benchmarks in a second here. So I'm gonna let these two run and heat soak for a little bit and make sure the system is stable and doesn't crash or anything like that uh, and then we'll come back to it. All right, so the high load stability check has been running for a little bit under 30 minutes now. So we just passed the 27 minute mark. CPU and GPU basically has been running at max or near max load the entire time. The 5800X3D never really got above this 82 degrees that we're seeing here. And for the 6900XT, that never really got above like 75 degrees. Uh, so that checks out for me and for reference the room temp is 22 almost 23 degrees C Mostly what I'm looking for is is this running in like the upper 90 degrees where there's something clearly wrong But it's not so we can stop this now So now I'm going to install games on this system my typical benchmarking suite that I normally do That's gonna take me a little bit of time to get set up and to transfer all the games over or to download them and get them all patched up So to save you the trouble of having to watch all that boring stuff thanks to editing magic you can go straight to the bench marks.
performance numbers of this PC are ridiculous and that shouldn't be a surprise given the specs that are in here. Now overall, NZXT BLD did a really good job with the build process and the assembly in terms of paying attention to detail and getting it really clean for cable management on both the front and the rear chamber. And you know, I didn't run into any hiccups when it came to unboxing it, getting the system up and ready to go. It worked right out of the box. There was no issues, but we have not discussed one thing yet. And that is of course, one of the most important things for most people, the price. So to do that, let's hop over to my main computer and we're gonna take a look at the website and their build configurator as well as some of their pre-builds. So looking at N60 BLD on the website, you do have quite a bit of options when it comes to their PCs. So you do have gaming PCs where you can build a custom PC uh, and that's where you can actually choose all the different parts that you want in it. They, and then they have these pre-built PCs and they have different categories and uh, budget ranges. And then they have their BLD kit, which is where you actually build it yourself. So the BLD kits, they send all the parts to you. It's unassembled. They have very detailed instructions and you can build it yourself. But no matter what you do from those three options, you do get a two year warranty that covers the entire system. And if anything goes wrong, instead of having to deal with, with typical warranties, you deal with like individual companies. But with NZXT, if anything goes wrong, the two year warranty, which is on both parts and labor, uh, you just talk to NZXT about it and they will handle it. If you do wanna go the custom PC route, you can start your build. They lay out all the performance for you here, whether it's 1080p or 1440p in the multiple titles and games. Uh, I'm told by NZXT that this was all at high settings. I wish they would write something here so that other people would know and they don't have to ask. It just says like right here, all of these tested at high settings. Uh, but you can choose your chipset and you can choose your budget. So I think most people are probably not gonna wanna build something like what they sent me that was more of uh, NZXT and AMD kind of flexing their muscles there. I think most people will probably work on budgets of like less than 2000, if not like $1,500. So let's check this out. Regardless of whatever configuration you come up with, because when you select each of these, you get a choice of like different cases, motherboards, you can select different CPUs, RAM, all of that. Th this lets you pick like specific brands and specific configurations. But what I like the most from this, and I wish every system integrator did, is if you go up here to the summary, they lay out every single part that you're gonna end up with and what they're charging you for it. So the price and breakdown for everything, including the $99 standard service, or this is what they consider their build fee. This makes it really easy just to know off the bat. And just by looking at this now, look at the prices, like this is pretty standard, uh, 220 for a 5600X, that's actually I think lower than what Amazon uh, or Newegg has it for. But then like for the example right now when I'm doing this, 280 for an RX 6500XT, that is overpriced. That's a $200 MSRP card. So I don't know what's going on here with NZXT. Take a look at the price, look at other websites and say, hey, do I think this is good value for me? And if not, you could go elsewhere or buy it yourself or and build yourself. So breaking down this, I think is very useful. If you are trying to save a little bit more money, if we go back to look at the pre-built PCs, they have a bunch of options to choose from for all different uses and budget ranges. It starts as low as I believe $699 for the foundation PC. So this is gonna have uh, like an AMD APU, which is gonna be the 5600G, which is very solid in terms of integrated graphics if you have a lower budget. Uh, but it's perfect for if you wanted to throw in your own graphics card down the line when you save up more money or something like that. Uh, but from that, uh, you can go up to the starter PC, creator PC, streaming PC, etc. And a good thing to note about any of these is that this does not include a $99 build fee because as you can see here, let's see the motherboard or the power supply, it just tells you like 650 watt bronze, B550 motherboard. It does not say, and for the RAM, 16 gigabytes. It doesn't say the exact model because it gives them more flexibility to be able to crank out the system a lot quicker uh, and be able to use whatever parts they have on hand in their inventory. Again, it's gonna be up to you whether or not you think this is worth it. These builds are not meant for people who can already build their own systems. If you can already build your own systems, you shouldn't be looking at pre-builds for yourself. It's for people like me who have a lot of either friends, family, or even viewers come up asking like, hey, can you help me with a build? And they can start with it because it's using off the shelf parts. They can one day upgrade and maintain it themselves uh, as opposed to going with another OEM that uses proprietary parts and all of that. But yeah, that's pretty much what they offer here. Lots of different options, custom, pre-built or build yourself even. Um, but let's wrap up this video. 
Whether you're looking for a PC for yourself or you're looking for one to recommend to someone else in your life, NZXT has a lot of options with a wide range of hardware and budgets that can fit your needs. They've got sales running throughout the year usually, and as of this video going live, they're running a limited time 10% sale on all gaming PCs on their website. So that's pre-built, customs, and BLD kits. That will also have free shipping in the contiguous US, which means the 48 states, not including Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada. Question for all of you watching though, do any of you out there have an NZXT pre-built PC yourself? Or have you ever recommended it to someone? And if so, what was the general experience with that? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear. That's it for me though. Thanks as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. I wanna give a huge thanks as always to the channel members for their above and beyond support. Uh, stay safe out there and I'll see you down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.